Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Sigmarite Mausoleum for Warcry and Age of Sigmar. And here's the Sigmarite Mausoleum that we're going to paint in this video, and I'll go through it step by step, showing you exactly how I painted it using some real simple techniques of mostly dry brushing and then some contrast paints and a couple of technical paints too. I'll use these two models to demonstrate how all the different techniques are used and from these two models you'll be able to apply those techniques to every part of the set. Okay let's get started and here's one of the sections that we're going to paint in this video and this one comes with a base and you can glue it to the base but I like to keep it separate I think it adds some options for gameplay and so here's the base that comes with it and the final component we're going to paint in the video and all of these are primed with the Citadel Chaos Black Primer Spray. So the paints I've used are a mix of the contrast paints, the technical paints, all from Citadel and I also use some Vallejo paints as well and I'll put links in the description below so you can easily find all of the paints used in this video and the brush I mostly use is a Kalinsky synthetic number two brush and this is a great brush all rounder for all different projects. The first step is to take some black and sky grey by Vallejo and we're going to mix equal quantities so one part of each together and that gives us a nice dark grey and then I'm just using this very vegan makeup brush loading that brush up and then wiping as much as I can off on this kitchen towel and cardboard and this is going to be for some dry brushing and this is going to give us a kind of mid-tone on our piece and so I'm just gently applying this dry brush all over the model and I start off quite gently at first just so I know how much paint is going to come off and then once I'm happy that there's not too much paint on that brush I can be a bit more rougher and then just start really applying it but I'm trying to catch it on those raised areas the most but this particular color as it's the mid-tone I want to get it over most of the model so once I've got the majority of the paint off on those raised areas I'll start being a bit more vigorous and going all over the model giving it a nice coat and then the same on the base picking out those raised areas I'll have to go back and forth to the paint a few times doing this process especially for a, a set of terrain with so many pieces I mean as you can see I'm doing the pieces here for the demonstration but as I did these I also painted all the other sections so I did it all in one go except for the statue which you can actually watch another video on if you want to see that done separately but here we go so continue it now here's the gate and again being rougher on those raised areas and also some of the sections we'll want to paint with contrast layer now I just take the sky grey on its own and I don't worry about cleaning my brush when you dry brush most of that paint comes off and I do the same thing with the cardboard and kitchen towel and now this is going to be a lot brighter so I'm going over really paying attention to the areas that we're going to coat with some colour so those roses you can see there they're going to have some contrast paint on later so I'm giving them the heaviest brush but then I'm picking out all the raised areas just like before and then once there's hardly any paint left on the brush we can be a bit more vigorous and really get those highlights sometimes I do like little circular motions but mostly downward and then the same here picking out the skulls because we're going to paint those later and then working over all those raised areas first getting that paint on there and this is re really bringing out the texture of these awesome terrain pieces I think the terrain from Games Workshop is so good. I mean, it's done so well that it just makes painting it really easy. And you can see here, we're just dry brushing and all the texture from the model is doing the work for us. So you don't need to be like really good at painting to do this and get some good effects. You just have to follow some like simple rules with the dry brushing and then with the contrast paints. And you can get some really nice effects quickly. So for tabletop ready pieces, uh, this is just a great way to do it. Dry brushing, contrast paints and um, you're good to go but here you can see just going over this nice gate again and look at all those textures coming out it looks great now we're on to some white paint and this is going to be the final bit so i'm using a smaller makeup brush now but it's really important to get those soft bristles and i did the same on the cardboard but now i'm picking out the bits that i know i'm going to paint later so the roses they're going to get painted with contrast paints and also the little the kind of um, sand egg timer thing there that's going to get painted too so i'm giving that most of that white but then I'm also going to go over some of the most 
prominent and raised areas of the model and just give that a little tiny gentle bit of uh, dry brushing just to give it an extra highlight and then this will be the finishing touch for all that gray stonework so we're not going to have to do anything else on that and the same on this bit picking out those skulls they're going to get some contrast later so you see how much they're much whiter they are now compared to the rest of the model and then on the raised areas been a bit rougher here i know i'm going to paint these tombstones so i'm putting a bit more white than i would on the area that's not going to be painted and then exactly the same on the gate there so where you can see the bricks i'm trying to avoid them as much as i can and just pick out the main parts that are going to be painted and so just take your time really work through it and just go back and forth doing that same thing getting that paint off on the cardboard and kitchen towel and then being gentle at first so you know how much paint comes off and then just catch those areas getting that nice highlight on the most upper parts and on those edges there along the base right now we'll start painting with some skeleton horde contrast paint and this is going to go on all our skulls and bones and we're just putting a nice generous coat over all of the skulls that you can see and that's all we're going to do for these skulls that dry brushing has done all the work for us the same here we've got all these different tones now working through from that dark gray to the lighter gray to the white and then with this over the top that's going to give us a really nice effect but it's not going to make parts of the model stand out too much and this is terrain so we want it to kind of be looking good but also not taking the limelight away from our miniatures and so this all works with these different tones to really make it all kind of blend in as one piece and a perfect kind of uh, centerpiece on the battlefield but also a great way to show off your miniatures right now we're taking some snake bite leather and this is going to be for the roof panels and here you can see i've got a bigger brush and this isn't anything fancy i'm not sure what size it is but it's quite big probably about four times bigger than the number two kalinsky synthetic brush that i use but this gives nice even strokes and it's going to give it a nice coat all over and i'm not swamping it notice like with the contrast paints there's not a huge amount of paint going on here but the big brush gives you nice even strokes and it'll give you a nice finish and so a lot of the time and a lot of the bad press the contrast paints have got is because that people have said to like put loads of it on and you don't need to sometimes you do with like wet blending or for certain techniques but for stuff like this you certainly don't need to put loads of paint on you can see here there's, there's not a lot going on i'm literally just coating it but letting all those highlights that we did earlier come through that paint and that is why these contrast paints are so good especially for me you know when i started painting i've only been painting these models since last last year and so you know i'm a beginner and so for me i can get some really nice effects really quickly get them tabletop ready and then i can concentrate on playing the game so you know if you're into just getting your terrain up on the table as quick as you can but you want it to look good then i think doing this style and using the contrast paint is a great way to go and so here again this bit we want this to look a little bit metallic it's kind of not brass or bronze but it looks a little bit like it you can get that effect from it you can do other things with contrast paints where you can put a lead belcher underneath and then uh, like a metallic paint and then put a contrast paint over the top of that and you get some really nice effects but you'll see that later anyway right now we're on to space wolves gray and this is like a blue gray and I just thought it'd be interesting to pick out some of those um, tombstones there and just mix the colours up a little bit. So I'm just doing one or two with this colour and giving it a nice even coat all over, again letting that highlight come through. And so I'm picking out two on this particular piece and then on the rest of the model on the Sigmarite mausoleum set, some other bases have got tombstones too. So I'm doing that again with the contrast plague bearer flesh now. I'm going to do some of them this kind of greeny yellow colour. This just breaks it all up so it's not all completely grey, adds to the kind of spookiness of the whole thing and I think it works nicely but that highlight really comes through really well. And I'm going to do the same with Gilliman flesh and this is going to give us a different colour all together. So we've got like almost metallics, we've got different stone colours and it just adds to the interest of the piece so when you're looking at it, when you take that building off and you see all this underneath it's going to look really cool. Okay, now we're taking the Contrast Creed Camo, and this is a nice dark green that I think will work really nicely for the leaves. So I'm just going over all the pieces and picking out those leaves and then giving them a nice coat and avoiding the little roses because we want to paint those later with the pink. And so I'm just being careful. I've got my number two brush again, so I've got lots of control. The brush can hold a nice amount of paint, so it's a perfect size for things like this, for these little detailed works. 
And so that's going in nicely, just picking out all those leaves before we move on to the roses. And for the roses, we're going to take some Volupus Pink. And this is one of my favourite colours out of the whole range. I think it's a great paint. And this goes on really nicely. I've got quite a bit of paint here. I'm not swamping it again, but I'm kind of coating it first. And then I'm taking a little bit more paint from the pot and just dotting it in the middle. And that's just going to give it some extra colour and really darken it in the centre. But you can see against those green leaves, these are really nice. And this is going to really bring the piece to life. And this little kind of accent of pink running through the whole piece. I think it's going to look really cool and just go really nicely with the dark black and grey of the rocks. But it's also going to work nicely with the different colours we've got in there from that um, snake bite leather that we've put on the roof. And now I'm going to take a technical paint called an Ilac Oxide. And this is going to make the roof panels and the little parts that we've painted in that snake bite leather look a, a bit like age. This is like a weathering effect like a verdigris almost or patina so we want to get that effect from this so i'm just dotting it on and it's a chalky paint it often dries a lot uh, lighter than you see when it first goes on and i find after about 12 to 24 hours it changes altogether so it definitely improves with age so the longer you leave it on uh, you know when you when you see it here it's going to look a lot better tomorrow than when it's still wet so just dotting that on being really like uh, frugal with how much i'm putting on and then here on the roof I'm putting a dot in the corner and then just running my brush down, but I'm not trying to do a really neat line. I'm almost like wiggling the brush slightly so it doesn't look completely perfect. I don't want a really dead straight line. And then I'm dotting more in the top and then I'm starting to work it down as if the kind of this like being like water running down for like years and years, really making that weathered effect. And so I'm just bringing my brush and as I get less paint on the brush, then I'm doing the really fine lines. And I'm taking my time on this stage, but you don't even need to do this. You could just leave the, the roof as it is. You don't need to do this at all, but I thought it'd be a nice finish. I really like the idea of the color from this Nihilac Oxide, this turquoise. I thought it would work really nicely with the pink from the roses, having those two colors together with that dark gray background. I think it looks really nice. And then I'm just looking at all the other pieces I've painted with that snake bite leather and imagining where all the gunk would kind of build up and where these pieces would start to get weathered and um, in the eye sockets, things like that. And then finally, just on the little cracks in the roof, I'm just putting some more little lines, dragging them down, and that's just going to add to that aged look. Also on this little cross that's on top of the gate, just dotting it in, in the little recesses and then dot 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 that along and then if you put too much on you can like wipe your brush on some kitchen towel which i'm doing now and then go back to the piece and it'll suck that paint up so don't worry if you put too much on there um some sometimes you can just completely coat it in it but it's best to do it like this i think right now we're taking some contrast black templar this is for the crow that sits on top and again this has had that white highlight on it so that's all going to come through the paint so i'm just putting a nice even coat all over the crow and then that's going to bring that to life with that highlight there a little bit more paint underneath because it's going to be a bit darker if you wanted to you could put a bit of red for the eye now it's lead belcher and this is going to go on all the metal work so this metal works had that black it's had all the dry brushing going over it and now we're going to roughly put on this lead belcher i'm not looking for a perfect coat here i don't mind if some of that black and gray and the highlights come through because that's all going to add to the aged weathers effect and so it's, it's almost like being a little bit lazy here and scruffy is going to give us a really nice finish and add to the whole effect of the piece. And so, you know, it works out really well to get it tabletop ready. You actually get some nice effects. And so here on these little spikes as well, just giving them a coat and then on the gate going all over it. And for this, I'm using a really scruffy brush. I don't want to use any of my best brushes. They would just get ruined with all the different textures we're going over here. And then on these little spikes too, just going to go over those. And you can see there's also the little metal strips with the rivets running along the top of the roof and down the sides of the panels. So I'm going to give those a coat too. Again, I'm not trying to get it perfect. I just want to have it so that it's covered over. I don't mind if it's like not right up to the edge. You know, I don't want to uh, kind of risk going over that work I've done within the Hylac Oxide. So I'm just taking my time doing some lines there. And then once that's fully dried, we'll take some Gillum and Flesh contrast paint and we'll go over all the paint, all the areas we painted that were metal with that lead belcher. And so again, being quite rough and ready here, got a scruffy brush and I'm just applying that over every single bit of the metal. And this is going to give us an aged 
brassy look and um, this works really nicely. The Gilliman Flesh over Lead Belcher is a great combo. You didn't really have to put the Lead Belcher on, you could have just put the um, Gilliman Flesh over the top but I think having that metallic coming through looks a lot better. And then when we highlight it like we're going to do now with some Stormhost Silver layer paint we're going to dry brush over it and it's really going to bring it to life. Here I'm using a really scruffy brush and I'm working that into the bristles, getting most of that paint off now on the kitchen towel. And I'm just going to try and catch the tips of the spikes, the raised areas, and then just work my way over all that metal. Make sure this is completely dry when, before you do this uh, dry brushing technique. Um, but this is going to just bring through little shiny bits of metal and just add to like a little highlight. Same here, just really gentle. You can see I'm just brushing across the tips of those spikes. And I'm also going to work down along that strip of metal and the rivets being really careful not to go over the flat roof parts and then on the edge here just using the side of the brush to get a nice edge highlight. Then I'm going to take some agarus dunes and this is going to go all over the kind of mud areas so any way that you've got mud or earth or rocks I'm just going to give that a coat of agarus dunes and this is going to look quite similar to the snake bite leather we've done on the roof but we're going to add some um, agrax earth shade to this later on once this is dried and that's going to make it a little bit browner uh, but again having it very similar to the roof is going to tie the piece in really it's going to make it look really nice it's almost like a darker version of the roof so it's a great base to use and it almost frames the whole piece so i think it works really nicely so while we're waiting for that to dry i took some citadel dry paint and don't worry if you knock these over because this paint's solid you can see inside it's just like really hard paint and so you can just dip your brush in, get a little bit on, it's a little bit wet, so I just like dot it off on some kitchen towel and then I'm gonna spot that on like little bits of rust and I'm aiming for areas where two parts of metal meet each other and so get more paint on the brush just on the tip, get it off on the kitchen towel and then dot dot dot, just dot it around wherever you think rust would naturally start to build up, maybe a little bit on the top there, certainly on these spikes and those rivets, work your way along and then this is a nice little touch to do at the end. You could use an orange contrast paint for this and that's what I've done in the past, but I picked this up quite recently. I've never used it, so I thought I'd try it out and I'm glad I did. It's a lot easier because you know your brush is pretty much dry straight away, so you can get a really nice effect quickly. Now the bottom's dried, we're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade and go over all that earth area we did with the Agarus Dunes previously. And then this is gonna give it a more brown, darker look, a lot more like earth, but still tie it in to the color we used on the roof. And so work your way through all the pieces to give it a nice coat. And this is also gonna give you a little bit more like shade, getting into those recesses too. And then to finish off on this little base here, and this will be our final step. And there we go, there's our Sigmarite mausoleum painted to a tabletop standard with mostly contrast paint, some dry brushing, and just a little bit of technical paint and dry paint just to bring out the weathering effects. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with how this turned out. The textures in the model were perfect for these techniques. And I think for the time it took to do it, we've got some really great results. And once this is on the table, it's gonna be really fun to play in. That pink is coming through nicely with the green. And when you contrast it with the Nihilac Oxide, that turquoise color, I think those two colors work really well together. I'll be using this mostly in Warcry, but as I learned to play Age of Sigma 2, this is gonna have a, a lot of play in that. And also in the Rain in Hell game that I'm gonna give a go, I'm gonna use that terrain for it as well. And here it is with one of my favorite Corvus Cabal miniatures, and he spotted us through the broken gate there. And here's the statue that came with it. And you can do the same techniques we've done in this video to achieve everything for this statue that you can see here. The weathering effects the same over that snake bite leather. And for all the stone and the roses there, done in exactly the same way. But there is a separate video on my channel that I've done. So if you wanna watch how to paint the statue, then you can find out how to do that and watch a separate video all about it. If you like the look of this set and you'd like to give it a go yourself, then I got mine from the Mortal Realms magazine, which is difficult to get hold of now on back order, um, but you can still buy the Sigmarite Mausoleum set, so look out for that. And I'll put a link in the description below to Element Games, where you can pick that up and you can save 20% there with the discount too. And I'll also put links 
to all the paints we used in the video and so you can easily find them and if you follow those links to element games they're affiliate links but it don't cost you extra in fact you can save up to 20 percent on everything you purchase there and for every sale made through a link i get a small commission and that's going to help me do loads more videos like this and develop the channel so thanks so much for that support it's brilliant and i really appreciate it if you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that it gave you a good idea of just how quick and easy it is to paint some of this terrain for your game. But I'd love to hear what you think, so join in in the comment section below. It'll be awesome to hear your thoughts and feedbacks. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.